into February, also known as the Love Month. It's Valentine's weekend. On this episode, we're sharing love to the world as we have a conversation with the Princess of Hearts, who has a heart for humanity. Her Serene Highness Angelica Ewa Yaroslawska Sapiha. Here on World Humanitarian Drives, Inspiring Millions. Thank you for joining us on Live or Replay. Here's a brief background about World Humanitarian Drive. World Humanitarian Drive, also known as WHD, is an international NGO founded in Croydon, UK, by British Indian global peace activist, entrepreneur, writer, Dr. Abdul Basit Syed. The primary vision of WHD is to promote peace, education, and trade harmony initiatives globally. WHD promotes peace and harmony among everyone across the world, regardless of race, religion, or nationality, living as one family. On this Inspiring Millions show, we'll do our best to make this discussion as engaging and interactive as we can. Please help us spread love and inspiration by sharing this link. Put your questions or comments in the chat box. Let us also know where you are watching this. Wherever you are in the world, let us keep you company as we share love, peace, and inspiration. Welcome to the show where we interview inspiring people from around the world to share with us their story. I'm Viva Andrada O'Flynn, your host and global media relations of World Humanitarian Drive. Today, our virtual stage takes us to Poland, where we have an in-depth conversation with a princess of hearts who has a heart for humanity and is winning the hearts of the world with her humanitarian acts. Here's more info about Her Serene Highness, Angelika Ewa Yaroslawska Sapiha. Princess Angelika is a peace ambassador, internationally recognized public figure, a philanthropist, humanitarian, Polish businesswoman, a social and political activist. She also created social movement White Rose. She was also an ambassador of the 303 Squadron and born for the Sabre movies. She was chosen as one of 30 before 30 by Forbes magazine. She is a patron of the Cambodia Landmine Museum, Cambodian Self-Help Demining, and the Landmine Relief Fund. Princess Angelica is an ambassador of the International Network of Women Entrepreneurship Ambassadors. She was chosen to be one of the 100 Polish women, which were a symbol of 100th anniversary of women's right to vote in Poland. Princess Angelica has received various awards to honor her actions for peace and human rights, and also humanitarian activities as an international ambassador of peace. Jenku Yechi, thank you for joining us here today, Princess Angelica. Bardzo dziękuję. It's my great honor and I'm very grateful to be here with you today among so many wonderful people who join you to talk about uh, world peace, about humanitarian work, about our global human family. It's an honor to be here today. Thank you, Princess Angelica. You have achieved so much at a young age. And then your website, angelikayaroslauskasapiha.com is loaded with your activities and achievements. So can you please give us a brief background about yourself and how you got into what you're doing? What's your story in your own words? Could you please introduce to the world who is Princess Angelica? Thank you so much. First of all, I, I feel, as I said, very humbled to be among so many wonderful people who join you here. I believe that every one of us have uh, their own path uh, and each of us are unique and we need to find our our own path, our own way, what is important for us. There's never uh, easy paths for success, for uh, real happiness. We need to put a lot of effort and all our heart in what we are doing, what is important for us. My path was not easy as well. I did many things and I sacrificed myself uh, mostly in these years to my work, which was always my passion. That's why I never 
felt any day like I'm working extremely hard. It was always something which bring, bring me a lot of happiness, a lot of joy. And everything what I was doing, I done with passion and with my heart. And uh, uh, always when I had one project, I uh, found something uh, what was interesting and uh, fascinating for me. And I always uh, did more than I was asked for. And I always believe that it's uh, one of the most important things that uh, we should not look back. Uh, we should not observe what anyone else is doing. We should just, just concentrate on our work and our mission, no matter uh, how hard it will be, no matter how obstacles we'll find on our way. And uh, we need to climb our own mountain, which is dedicated for us. For me, humanitarian work and ethical projects were always a priority. So when I was creating uh, economic projects or, uh, um, or social projects, uh, they were always done with uh, this idea, with this idea fix of uh, humanitarian and social um, and ethical uh, initiatives. Um, my organization uh, um, was a signatory of uh, the Sustainable Development Agenda, uh, the movement White Rose uh, Against Hate Speech, dedicated to this understanding of creating a world of understanding of mutual respect is very important for me. And my work uh, in uh, foundation, um, foundation of the pilots fighting in Poland at the broad, which was taking care of social, um, social education about the history, the history of the pilots of the World War II. But I always highlighted it that being a peace ambassador is to understand what war is. So this education is extremely important, it's vital to teach uh, how, that in war, everyone loses, uh, there's no winners. Uh, that's why I created this foundation, which was supporting many charities, uh, important initiatives, education for children, for young people, for students, uh, but also uh, spreading knowledge, uh, um, information about uh, this beautiful history, about Polish pilots, uh, about Polish heroes who fought in the Battle of Britain. But we also supported uh, many charity events uh, for, for orphanages for children, like uh, uh, the ball, uh, charity ball in London under the patronage of the Duke of Kent, and many, many, many others. Now I have also the foundation uh, um, which is dedicated to humanitarian work and sustainable development goals. But as well, I cooperate with many uh, peace leaders, humanitarian uh, leaders around the world, like this organization, World Humanitarian Drive. So I think that the great power is in this, that I'm not alone. I'm uh, surrounded by wonderful people, wonderful leaders, work with me on those important issues and we can see the impact of our work. Uh, we are like a one family and that is a fantastic value and uh, of course now uh, the anti-landmine campaign, global campaign to read uh, the world from landmines, to clear the world from landmines, to, to create a safe future for the next generations around the globe is my priority and I am absolutely dedicated to this mission. Hey, that's very interesting. Thank you so much for sharing with us your passions in life and also the causes that you're supporting. So you mentioned earlier that you're also supporting a global anti-landmine campaign. So why is it so important and how does the world situation look like now? Princess Angelica? I mentioned that um, for me, the responsible for everything is a real poor passion. If we have this passion, we are driven so intensively to do what is important for us that the time, uh, efforts, um, uh, nothing matters. We will just do everything to achieve our goal. And for me, uh, this mission is the most important mission. Uh, it's extreme honor for me that I can follow the steps of Princess Diana, who was a queen of people's hearts. And she truly believed in what she was doing. She was never afraid of 
uh, of being criticized for her work. When we do uh, global humanitarian work, it's not easy. It's not an easy uh, path. Uh, it's a hard one. And I believe that that's what make us um, that's what they make us happy that we can be useful, that we can work for others. I believe that we are a global human family, as you mentioned. That's why there should never be a situation as we have right now, that it's a 21 century, 2021, and over 16 million people across the globe are living in a fear of being killed or injured by landmines. Every day, children are killed or mined by landmines every day it happens in the places around the world we are so uh, so glad uh, we are so uh, lucky people that we are living in a places where we can wake up in the morning and feel safe and don't be afraid of our uh, our own life and health but also of our family members there are many people across the globe who are living in a everyday fear and if you are, if you are wondering if uh, it's far away from you, uh, it's not far away. Over uh, one uh, one of fourth part of the world is uh, contaminated with landmines, which means that 25% of the world uh, have landmines around, and people cannot um, cannot live normally. Children can can't play in the background uh, on the country yard. Uh, people cannot do farming. And what is terrible about this is that if you are wondering if it happened today, uh, it happened today, but it was not you. We are lucky enough to live in a safe places, but 60 million people across the globe are not so lucky. And uh, of course, there is many brave people around the world who are doing wonderful work. Uh, they clean the world from, from landmines to create a safe future for the next generations. But still the mining could, will not happen so fast as it, as it should if we will not support it by our global, human, our global community. That is a priority. That is why I went to Cambodia. Uh, this campaign is important for me from several years, but the last two years are very intensive if it comes to this work. I was in Cambodia for almost eight months. I was on the minefields. I met with uh, people who are sac who sacrificed their life for humanitarian work, for the mining, for clearing their country from landmines. Uh, even uh, that we know and we heard that there are landmines somewhere, maybe on a different part of the world, we should understand that they are in many different parts of the world, in many different continents, in, in many different communities, but they, in all those places, they are creating uh, extreme fear in children's minds, in women's minds, in the minds of the people who never um, even it never even took part in this conflict. Sometimes love man can lay in the ground for uh, 40 years or more and then they explode under the child's feet. I always, uh, I always tell that landmine does not distinguish between uh, the soldier's foot and the children's foot. That is why this campaign is extremely important because now it's a time when we need to engage our global community. That is why uh, I'm telling about this. That is why I highlight this, this problem because without our international involvement, the world will not be clear, will not be cleared from landmines till 2025, which is a goal, of course. And uh, we know the campaign landmine 2025. It needs to become a reality. But now, during the COVID-19 era, people are not tra traveling freely as they did in the past. So the tourist doesn't come to the places contaminated by landmines. So we need support from other countries, from, from other people, from other communities. And every each of us can make a difference. Our involvement is possible today, even after our conversation. You can visit the website of Cambodian Landmine Museum, Cambodian self Help the Mining, uh, Landmine Relief Fund, and you can support a real action, a work of people who risk every day their lives to clear the world from landmines. I work with Nobel Prize winners, 
I'm so honored to work with the people and meet the people who worked with Princess Diana, supported her, who teach her and teach me as well to understand this problem, to know how to advocate uh, this uh, totally important humanitarian problem uh, because it's deeply humanitarian uh, problem. And I also met uh, people from orga organizations like the Halo Trust or uh, people who created global campaign against landmines. Uh, due to their work, now we have global important convention, but still there are countries which didn't sign mine by treaty. That's also very important because each of us can be an activist. Each of, the, of us can stress this important issue until the, there, will, there will be a countries which still allows to create, produce, stock landmines, will not read with this problem uh, totally. And I truly appreciate the words of Mother Teresa. She was asked one time, I think that it's uh, fantastically showed her, her state of mind. She was asked why she never go to the anti-war uh, demonstrations. She said that she will join with a pleasure demonstration which will be pro-peace. So uh, my goal is to show that ambassador for peace, understand what war is, understand what it brings. And our goal is to promote global peace. If there will be more and more people who understand a great value of peace, that it uh, must be um, like a plant. You always need to bring water. You need to take care of the plant because uh, otherwise it will, it will die. That's exactly the same with the peace. Peace must be maintained. There, there is a strong need nowadays of the people who will, uh, who will be a peace promoters, a peace advocates around the world. That is my goal and my mission to, uh, to raise awareness about this global anti lemon campaign, to engage as much people as it is possible. And I'm very glad that there are such uh, people like uh, those who created World Humanitarian Drive, who created Moral Education Day, which I support as well, because it's so important to teach about the main problems which we have in 21 century. And if we will get rid of these barbaric weapons of war, we will be able to create a real world of peace and understanding. Oh, that's just so fascinating. It's so great to hear from someone who has a heart for the people. Now, because since you have a multitude of achievements and you're doing so many things, do you ever experience periods of self-doubt? And what do you do about it, Princess Angelica? That's why I think that uh, the passion is absolutely critical because Sometimes it's very hard, especially when we do so many initiatives at the same time. We are exhausted. I just came uh, from my plane today and uh, I started the meeting the same day and tomorrow will be exactly the same. There's no weekends, uh, of course, but it's exactly with other people from, especially from humanitarian background who I know, they work every Saturday and Sunday. It's normal for us that we make uh, conferences during the night, during the weekend. But I think that's, that's the passion which drives us to this. Um, of course, especially nowadays, I understand perfectly that people feel very stressed, um, feel very, uh, sometimes very lonely in this world, uh, world of COVID, world of masks, world when we cannot meet normally and spend time together. We need other people uh, very, very much. That, that's the most important thing. And uh, I think that um, first thing is to um, have this passion for, our activity, our action, if we sacrifice ourselves to something bigger than us, something more important than us, it brings us so much satisfaction. And even if we have some doubts or we don't have enough energy, we understand that we are taking part in something uh, more important than us. Uh, living for ourselves, it's not a, a life of satisfaction, living for the others, living for um, important mission, is what brings sense to our life, is what brings meaning to our life. 
uh, it's like with this uh, mountain, if we will not climb our mountain, we will don't feel the satisfaction. We cannot just uh, listen to someone else climb it. We just need to go there uh, by ourselves. We just need to visit the, the top. But we need other people and uh, bringing uh, support for the others can be something great for ourselves as well. I always says that um, when we do something for others, we do it for ourselves as well. And even though that it's a pandemic COVID era right now, I was in Africa where I have wonderful, uh, wonderful project partners. We are supporting children from very poor families there. Uh, we bought uh, books for them and other equipment for school. We did presents for uh, Christmas and New Year's Eve. After that, I was uh, in Emirates. Right now, I also had um, global humanitarian um, meetings with uh, global leaders. And uh, soon I will travel to Los Angeles. And after that, uh, to Cambodia. I plan to go there for a, a little bit longer uh, due to this work. So I think that uh, uh, it's the most important to find that we are, uh, that someone needs us, that we can help someone else. And I think that it's the best uh, medicine for the times when we feel, uh, when we feel weak, when we feel lonely. There is always someone who needs our support. Always, we are never alone. That's so amazing. I like what you said that we need other people. And it's people like you, Princess Angelica, that the world needs now. So you're also a businesswoman and everybody has a business inside of them. What would you say to unleash the inner entrepreneur of a person? So um, my initiatives are created by me. So um, it uh, took me a lot of time as well to build um, stable projects and then to be able to create foundation, to uh, be able to do the work, which is the most important for me. So first I had to um, work hard also for, um, for my work, for my initiatives as well. I'm also um, preparing uh, a fashion brand and other projects which will also uh, support sustainable development and humanitarian work as well. Um, and, um, but for me, just uh, doing uh, a normal, regular business would be not enough. And I knew it from the start. That's why I created my foundation a few years ago uh, when I was uh, supporting, uh, I was a, um, a mother of a project. I always say that it's my children, a free of free squadron about the Polish squadrons who fought in the Battle of Britain. This movie was a great, massive global success. And um, when I do some projects, I also always find this, uh, uh, this uh, humanitarian work as well. Uh, when it was a movie about the story, I created a foundation. When I was uh, coordinating a Poland 3.0 program for sustainable development, uh, that is the program which was presented on the Free Seas Initiative Summit, on the Global Summit, uh, as a case for how, how companies, how, how entrepreneurs can support sustainable development, how they can create projects which have ethical social impact, which are supporting clean water, uh, clean energy, clean air. That was our priority. So uh, for me, business without uh, mission um, it's not a business which is interested, uh, interesting for me. I always need to have this, uh, uh, this point if in everything what I'm doing. And when I was, uh, well, I was so honored to be on the Forbes cover, it was a great surprise for me. Uh, I was uh, 30 under 30 and that was uh, also beginning of wonderful, um, wonderful um, uh, part of my life, wonderful chapter because I met a lot of people who are doing uh, uh, fantastic work uh, around the world, especially women leaders. And uh, now we are doing also other initiatives uh, together as well. But when I was on the cover, uh, there was uh, a name of, of this, uh, um, this cover, um, a good spirit of business. And that's, uh, that was, of course, a great compliment for me. But that's the most important thing which I want to highlight that uh, a business nowadays should have some mission. We live in a very hard times. There is uh, more conflicts this year than 
the last year than in the last 10 years, in the last decade, which means that we live in a very uncertain times. And I think that it's a wonderful time for young leaders to create a global impact in their businesses, in their humanitarian work, in their uh, social life as well. Uh, that's why for me it was always priority to build this structure of global uh, people who I'm honored to work with, who have the same state of mind as, uh, as I do. And there is many such, uh, such people around the world who are doing projects for clean water, clean energy, for, air, for clean air, uh, some solutions uh, which makes uh, people life better. Now I work with them. They are also in my programs, with, in my previous uh, projects as well. And now we continue our work, but uh, on more uh, global, global scale. And of course, it's also a great fuel for us to be able to do other humanitarian work and to engage more people. And to, uh, as the virus is spreading around, I always say that we can also spread the virus of this wonderful good energy of good activities people sometimes don't know how to start but when they uh, find the, the way when they find their path uh, they start to do fantastic work and uh, even uh, just uh, before our call i talked with uh, women leaders from ukraine syria um, georgia and together with them, we created a, a geopolitical alliance for women, for a peace, like a platform for peace. And uh, we did a special letter to Secretary General of United Nations, uh, uh, women uh, who are supporting peace, who are making a global call for peace, for uh, promoting the leaders who are bringing, promoting peace. That is so important nowadays. I believe that women have a very special role uh, in this decade, a uh, very special role in peace uh, actions. I'm supporting peacekeepers, I'm supporting veterans. A few years ago, my organization uh, financed a travel and we prepared everything for a travel of uh, uh, widows and children of the soldiers who were killed during the recent conflicts. And in the United States, um, Polish uh, soldiers, veterans, um, did a trip uh, 6,000 kilometers uh, on their bikes uh, from Los Angeles to New York uh, via uh, Dev Valley. So it was fascinating. We supported this trip, but it, its main goal was to uh, spread awareness about PTSD syndrome that it touched uh, people, their, the veterans, their families, but as well children and people who are raised, who live in conflict zones. There are millions of people around the world who are struggling with uh, post-traumatic stress. And it's so important that we can use nowadays this global canals to make this world a better place, to educate people, and uh, for me, very important project is the one which I'm also preparing right now. I'm traveling to Los Angeles, to Cambodia, to other countries due to the anti-landmine, global anti-landmine campaign. But I'm also preparing my own project. Um, it's a, it will be educational platform. And I'm uh, preparing uh, uh, as well with my team uh, books uh, uh, for children, but not only for children, about uh, moral education, about the main values, about the value of peace, about uh, landmine campaign, why the world should be free from landmines, how children live around the globe, why it's so important to respect other religions, other cultures, other, um, other countries, their heritage. So it's a very important project for me. When I started to work on this, it was before the COVID-19 era, I knew that it's important, but now I think that it's even more important because the future generations are the most important. The children are the living messages we sent to the time we will not see. And uh, what I want to also tell is that I'm extremely grateful to all those people who do this wonderful humanitarian work around the world. I'm very grateful to the people who are <clears throat> doing every day, uh, every day the mining work. They are clearing world from landmines. They are silent heroes. We don't see them very often. We don't hear about them very often, but every day they risk their life. Every day they are working on a minefield. I met uh, such a people in Cambodia 
I met such a people in different places around the world, on different continents, but those in Cambodia are my wonderful friends. I, I'm really, really grateful to them that they risk their life every day. Like Akira, I'm a patron of uh, his museum, Cambodian self held the mining. He was a child soldier. Uh, when he was a child, he was taken from his family and he was, uh, he, the, the Red Khmers took him uh, and he was working as a soldier. Uh, he had contacts with landmines. And when uh, he was uh, adult, after the Khmer Rouge, he decided that he will sacrifice his, his whole life to clear the wound from landmines. That was his first decision, which he was able to take by himself in his life. Because before that, he was always used by army, by Red Khmers, but by Khmer Rouge. And now he, what he did is absolutely amazing. He cleared his country from landmines. He, mm, he teach people, he educate the mining teams who are now working wonderful work in the struggles because it's so warm there. Uh, it's extreme temperature, a lot of trees, plants around, uh, grass, and you need to be so extremely careful to find the landmines. But one mine clear, cleared means one life saved. And I received such a bracelet down from the unexploded ordnance and cleared mine. And on this bracelet, I have uh, something which always brings tears into my eyes. I have it in a special place in my home. I look at it every day. There is a word in Khmer, Khmer and a word in uh, English. One uh, mine, one life. And each of us who are listening to us today at the moment, can contribute to this, can make a real impact because our support means one mind cleared, which means one life saved. Thank you for all the contributions you bring into this world, Princess Angelica. It's not easy doing what you do. So it's also love month. How do you define love in your own words and how do you share love with the world? Oh, love is the greatest uh, power in this universe. I'm absolutely sure there's nothing uh, stronger than love. So love always wins and love brings us this uh, wonderful attitude and uh, energy and uh, what attracts us to, to the others. And for me, love, the definition of love is the uh, definition of understanding when we don't uh, judge others, when we see them, we don't judge, we just try to understand. That's, that's the greatest definition of love, in my opinion. I met many homeless people. I, I also support places with homeless people as well. I met many people who had uh, extreme problems and struggles in their lives. If you will not listen to their story, if you will not take time to understand them, to just uh, uh, look uh, inside their soul, not just what is easy to see outside. You will see that each one of us have a wonderful treasure, wonderful, unique history. Each one, uh, one of us is different and understanding, not judging, is a definition of love. Being for others, bringing hope, bringing understanding, uh, love other people, no matter who they are, how they live, what are their values, where they live, in which culture, in which religion, it's all not important. We can love each other, we can bring happiness to the life of others, we can bring hope, and the hope is what we need very, very intensively nowadays. That's something so important to bring uh, this happiness, this smile, this hope to the others. Even if you have nothing, you can bring so, so much to the others. You can contribute, you can change someone's life. And if we will just look around, around ourselves, even today, we will find people who can, who, whose lives can be better on this, this uh, month of love, on this Valentine's Day. There are so many definitions of love which we can bring for the others. And you know, in Cambodia, I, I met wonderful people, uh, Bill Morse, um, his wife, 
those people did something special. They came from uh, uh, from other country, from other continent, from America uh, to Cambodia. They saw that they can do so much for children, for people who who uh, are suffering because uh, of landmines. Uh, they are injured, maimed. They don't have children who don't have legs, hands. They saw that there is so much which they can do. And, you know, they just came one time, second time, and they finally, they stayed in Cambodia. Uh, she's teaching children English. Uh, she's a teacher. They created a rural school program and they are making electricity, water. They are bringing it to the schools, rural schools in countryside. Uh, they uh, created uh, a fund to support the mining. Those are, for me, those people are, are real heroes. And what they do is definition of love. They could have uh, um, easy life in, uh, in different places where, uh, where they were born, where they were raised, where they have friends and family. But they choose to live in other place in the world where they can contribute, where they can use what they learned what they received, their gifts, they use for the others right now. And I believe that when you do such a thing, you double what you have. When you give to the others, you never lose. You always win. Thank you for sharing love with the world. And for our final question, Princess Angelica, what is your inspiring message to the world? Each of us, no matter what we do, no matter where we are, no matter who we are, have a total power to change his home, his community, his country, and the world. Because now we live in a special blessed times when no matter who we are, we can achieve what we want. We can be always someone important in your home, in your small community, in your country or on the global scale. It doesn't matter if you are a world leader or someone extremely well known around the world, or you are just a person who is doing wonderful work in your small village or is a wonderful mother in your home and your children think that you are a great hero. You can change your world because your world is the people who surround you who are around you, who are living with you every day. We have a power to change our lives and to change, to change the lives of others. And I strongly encourage you to support especially landmine campaign, to support the mining teams. It's so easy to find them. It's so easy to donate even a small amount. But if we will all do this, this world can be a good place, a place where children will be able to dream about something more, not just to be afraid in their everyday life. As I mentioned before, 60 million people across the globe are living in a daily feel, fear of being killed or injured by landmines. They don't have uh, dreams as we have. They dream to be safe. They dream to be able to come back from school without the risk of uh, of a step on a landmine. Um, so my message is to think about your own community, think about your home, about the people around you, think about our global problems because we are all connected, we are all one. And each, of, each one of us is important and special. Jenku Yechi. Thank you for joining us here today, Princess Angelica, and sharing with us your inspiring story. We appreciate your views and perspective on life, love, peace, and humanity. In honor of your international recognition for your virtue and persistently serving and inspiring humanity with your noble deeds, World Humanitarian Drive would like to award you Princess Angelica Ewa Yaroslawska Sapiha with Inspiring Humanitarian Award. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm so extremely honored. Thank you so much. It's, it's my great honor. I don't find the words to express how, how grateful I am. I will, I will use this award to, to be a great motivator for me to do more and more 
and more. And it's my honor to, to be in contact with such a wonderful people who are creating World Humanitarian Drive because it's so extremely important that we need to all be in this together and support each other and work together because we are all one and only together in a group we can create something. There's no leader in this world who can achieve something only by himself. We all need each other. It's a great honor for me. I am truly moved. Thank you so much. And it's signed today on the 12th of February, 2021. And it's signed by Dr. Abdul Basit Syed, WHD founder and chairman. So thank you so much, Princess Angelica Ewa Yaroslawska Sapiha for all your humanitarian works and here's to many more. This has been World Humanitarian Drive's Inspiring Million Show. If today's discussion inspired you, please share the link with your family and friends. Share with us your takeaways from today. Follow us on our social media accounts. Hit subscribe on your, our YouTube channel. Visit our WHD website, www.whd.org.uk for more inspiring events. To our family and friends celebrating Chinese New Year of the Ox, Gong Si Fa Chai, we wish you all immense riches in the new year. And here's a quote we'd like to share with you. Your love matters. Find your love and allow it to develop you. Create love in every way, every day. Every moment is a time to love. The more you love, the better you get at living life. Let's love life all we can while we still can. Stay safe and healthy, everyone. To our frontliners, we salute you. We thank you for your hard work and sacrifices. On behalf of WHD team, Thank you for joining us. I'm Viva Andrada O'Flynn. Please join us again next week as we inspire the world here on Inspiring Millions.